Welcome everyone to The Vlogan, a vlog for individuals with special needs and those who love them. Hello everyone, thanks for joining The Vlogan today. I am lucky enough to be with Beth Chambers and Beth is the statewide Ohio ISP manager, which is in the Office of Quality and Innovation in the Division of Policy and Strategic Direction for the Ohio Department of Developmental Disabilities. So I've got an important person to talk with today and I'm, I'm so lucky. We're gonna talk about the Ohio ISP and you probably know what an ISP is, but you maybe don't know that since 2019, a lot of work has been done to improve the ISP. And Beth has been on the front lines of that and is now the manager of the rollout for the Ohio ISP, a brand new tool to uh, help individuals with special needs here in Ohio. Beth, thanks for joining me today. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Sometimes people are viewing this and they, they actually don't have any contact with the county board. So can you just yes. kind of talk about what an ISP is and then maybe talk about what it used to be and how the Ohio ISP you know, changes things for the better? Yes, yes. I think the important thing to remember is it's been called a lot of things, an individual plan, an individual service plan. It really is kind of the document that spells out if someone is working with me, they would ask me what I need and want. It would be captured through an assessment process and then really put into that individual service plan to say what it is, what's going to happen, and then what provider is going to help me get there? Who is going to help me get to the things that I need and want? And how is that going to be delivered? So I look at it as it's a commitment, an agreement, a contract between the person and their team and their team of providers that are going to help them get where they want to go in life. So it's really that, that vehicle that helps them get the things that they need and want in their life. Got it. So a family engages the County Board of Developmental Disabilities, wherever they live, and there are assessments done. And the ISP is the planning tool that says, here are needs, here mm -hmm. are desires, here are goals. That's marked down. What's important to you as an individual? And then what do we need to do to get there? Is that? Yes. And it names the people who are responsible for doing that, right? Yes, yes. And then it's, also the funding sources? Yes, exactly. So it it identifies, it prioritizes, because a lot of times there are a lot of wants and needs, and we might not want to work on all of them at the same time. So uh, really working with that, that support team to prioritize that. So the plan identifies what we're working on for this year, this time span. In the past, it's been harder than necessary probably to update, to make changes as people's wants and needs change. So moving towards Ohio ISP, we really want this standardized system that can help the whole team understand what, what's being worked on right now. You mentioned goals and really moving towards outcomes and what experiences do people want to have as steps to work on? Say I want to get my driver's license. So okay. we're going to, the team is going to break out those steps that what's it going to take for me to get there? Do I need to, to get a book? Do I need to review written materials? Do I need to schedule a test? Do I need to save some money? So what are the steps and who's going to help me with that? And am I making progress? So we really want this to be an ongoing fluid process where people are continuously having those conversations, learning about what people really want. Do they still want what they wanted three months ago? Or do we need to change course a little bit and redirect that a little bit? It might not change the overall goal or outcome, but it might change just what steps do we need to work on some more before we get to the next stage of that, that progress. Awesome, Beth. And so tell me, is Ohio ISP new? I know that you mentioned ISPs have been around for a while. Is Ohio ISP new? Yes, Ohio ISP is the new planning tool. It's the standardized template. Uh, it used to be that there were 88 different county boards and all of them had different assessment and planning tools, templates. Uh, there are also hundreds of ICFs, intermediate care facilities, and they use different templates. So 
there were just numerous ways of doing this and no consistent practice process or template involved. So uh, one of the, the biggest goals with all of this moving towards a standardized assessment and planning tool is really to help people as they move throughout Ohio. If I move from county to county or from a facility to a county, a waiver setting out in the community, that everyone's going to be familiar with that standardized planning template and process so that everyone knows where to look, where to um, expect to find things. And then the good stuff is what we put in it that really makes it come to life, that makes it personalized. Uh, you and I might receive similar services, but the difference is how we want those delivered, how that needs to look for us. It might be provided by a totally different provider type. So really identifying what people want and need and then capturing it in a service plan has been around for a long time. That's not new. This standardized system in where we're all using, everyone across Ohio is using the standardized template and process that is new. And as things change, it brings along some challenges. You know, some people liked what they were using before. I think we're in this stage now where people are, are used to the Ohio ISP. Pretty much throughout Ohio, teams have been using the template and process for a long time, even if they have not entered the information into the online system yet. So there are different phases. We're really trying to have our teams meet the local teams where they are and support them as needed. A lot of times when people hear the word standardization, it sounds impersonal, but in <laughs> fact, that's the opposite of what's happening. Is that right? That is right. I'm glad you brought that up because I do think people were fearful that a standardized template, they're all going to look the same. Everyone's plan will look the same. And that couldn't be farther from the truth. We have developed a system where you kind of go where you're compelled to go. There are many, many questions. The discovery assessment areas within the Ohio ISP are built on the charting the life course domains and the, the terms are the same. So there's some familiarity with the language and the um, concepts. So really, it should be familiar. So we know that the Turning the Life course tools have been helpful for families and teams. So we felt that that was important. The assessment areas are broken into key areas of people's lives. And we felt strongly that communication was such an important foundational step that it's the first area of the assessment. So first of all, we figure out how someone communicates because everyone communicates. And then we kind of, it's kind of like a building block. You go from there. So once we know how to communicate, how to interact with someone, then we can better understand how they can communicate what they want and need and that they might need some supports along the way. Their family might need to help them with that communication. I mentioned the online system. Yeah, I was actually just going to ask you about that. that you mentioned template and then online system. So I'd love to hear more yes. about that. So the template, there is a paper version, which is actually a Word document. So you can kind of get familiar with the questions, the concepts, the process. And then the online system just helps automate and populate. It takes out some of the human error. Sometimes there's rich, great assessment information that doesn't always carry over to the plan because we're humans working with humans. So we want to make sure that that rich assessment information is really carried over to the plan. For instance, each section of the assessment kind of gives probing questions to the person authoring the plan that if this is going to lead to an outcome, we can flag that so it will carry over the information. If there's a risk identified for someone, it will carry over to the plan automatically to say, okay, this is identified as a risk for this person. We want to make sure we don't lose sight of that. And it prompts with further questions like, hey, you've entered this. Yes. Let's go down that path just a little bit. Yes, exactly. So oh, wow. it really does kind of lead you to um, technology is so important in people's lives. So there's a there's a checkbox like technology. Has technology been explored for this person in each section? So that, for instance, if I have if I use my smartphone for certain things, that would be captured in one section. If I use automated technology for my medications. We want to make sure that that's identified and captured in each area so that when I'm compiling that assessment information, nothing gets lost so that it's carried back over to say, hey, wait a minute, you said this might be a potential outcome. So let's let's carry that over, make those connections when possible. It really does just take out some of that human error. If a choking risk is identified, making sure that, you know, 
those words trigger that carryover. You mentioned that this ISP or the Ohio ISP was a template. Now, is it launched now so that all 88 counties and all ICS are using this so that the next time people have their planning meeting, they will be taking part in the Ohio ISP? That's a very good question. Many County boards and ICFs are using this. There are over 5,000 plans in the DODD system, which is where everything will be housed. There are also uh, software vendors that are able to capture the same content and eventually transmit into DD's, DODD's system. So 88% of all intermediate care facilities have been trained gotten the proper IT access and the roles established and have entered at least one plan in the system. So we're making progress, we're supporting teams. And yes, the expectation is that every person receiving waiver services and every person living in an ICF will have a plan in the system by June 30th, 2024. Wow. Awesome. So the technology interface to enter the information might be different from county to county because they might have different contracts with technology folks, but the actual outcome of the Ohio ISP and what's ultimately there for people to access from county to county for an individual is all the same. Yes, okay. the content is the same. There are requirements. So right now there's Salesforce that the DODD system uses, that's the DODD system, that's the okay. source of truth. So, and then there's Britco and Primary Solutions are the two vendors that county boards and ICFs can also select that might, they might've already been using them for software needs in the past. And they have developed the same standardized plan template. They, it's captured within their systems and then it meets the exact requirements as the DODD system and it's transmitted in to be housed there. The ultimate goal is that all team members can access through the DODD system, regardless of the vendor that they are using. Got it. The gasoline is, is the same, right? It's just whether you go to Shell or BP or what have you. Uh, and, and the outcome is going to be the same, uh, except, you know, obviously the plan is different for each individual, but it's all there in one central location so that things don't fall through the cracks. I move from Franklin County to Delaware County. Mm -hmm. I'm not going through new assessments. It's there. They can press a button and they see there's no, oh, I forgot my plan at my first meeting going to meet with Delaware County. What am mm -hmm. I going to do? They can just log on and they can see everything that I've done and the progress I've been made. And I don't really have to start over. Right. It is that same information. So it's it's cutting down on some of that time it's taking to kind of get used to the, the template and where things can be found in a plan. Because as people move, we want to make that transition as smooth as possible. So also with that, I think it, it gives a lot more empowerment to the team members, uh, the person. We really want them and their family, if they choose, for them to drive the, the service delivery. And that they are in charge of their own plan, that they are saying what they want and need. And then the team gets the responsibility and the honor of helping them achieve those goals and what they want to make their life as, you know, as good as it gets. So it sounds like here's what I want, here's what I need. And then the, the ISP becomes a reflection of that charting the life course, which is which is really cool because I, I I have found um, having been a teacher and worked in the in the community for a while that so many times you know the IEP becomes the the plan and so it's like well we got to fill out this box instead of saying here's what we need up here on the board let's document it in the IEP and it yes. sounds like. That's what's happening. Charting the life course, here's the plan. Now let's document it and figure out how we get there with the ISP. Yes. Exactly. And then monitoring progress. The, one of the most important things is really checking in and making that kind of a fluid, ongoing conversation where if someone has identified what's important to them and say we're working on two outcomes and we've reviewed the experiences, 
is it working? Is it not? Do we need to relook at something? Do we need to get the team back together? Really checking in with that person to see, are we helping you get where you want to be? And if not, what can we do to, to better support you? We're really focused on those direct support professionals also really tapping into what they're seeing every day. They have the closest relationship with that person. They're seeing day in and day out what's working and what's not working. So really giving their position and their insight the respect that it deserves and really empowering those team members to be the eyes and ears of the team and to communicate what they're seeing um, so that changes can be made so that, you know, the whole team can support the person. That check-in isn't just the responsibility of the plan author, that the communication flows both ways. We have to be asking the provider what's working, the direct support professional, what is working, make sure we're involving family and guardians in those discussions so that we're, we're constantly learning and then making modifications and uh, revisions to the plan accordingly. Got it. Awesome. So I'm presuming that you didn't just become the statewide Ohio ISP manager just out of the blue. What's, what's your background and, and how did you get to be you know, in charge of this rollout. I mean, it's a it's a big deal. So, uh, how how did that happen? Well, thank you. Um, I I have a kind of interesting background. I worked for providers for years. I really the direct support professional. I I did direct care for years. Um, I worked with some people that were unable to use words to communicate, but they communicated with me every day. So really trying to take all of that into perspective. I worked for provider agencies. I've worked with the Ohio Department of Developmental Disabilities for it'll be 20 years this month in different capacities. I did accreditation reviews, county board accreditation reviews, and did compliance. I was a regional consultant for a while with the department and then have done some work with the Ohio ISP since um, since, since its inception um, back in 2019. So have been involved in the Ohio ISP uh, from the start and just really excited to see it come to fruition. And yeah. I'm glad we're at the place we are right now. And I just... We, I have a team of people that we're just so excited to see it get to the next level. We can't wait to hear what's working, what's not working, make enhancements, make tweaks, and really check in to hear the, the good, bad, and the ugly of what is working for people and how we can do better. That's awesome. So tell me if I was a self-advocate or a parent or uh, a, a somebody who is either um, a person with their own ISP, or I'm helping somebody with an ISP. Is there anything for me to do? Should I be asking about this? Or is it something that I should expect to happen? Is there anything that I should be doing if I'm out in the community and, and receiving services? Yeah, I think that's a great question. I think um, the most important thing you can do is have that great relationship with either your county board or the intermediate care facility, where that contact there, that services support administrator, or SSA, as we like to say, or that QIDP, the Qualified Intellectual Disability Professional. Mm -hmm. So it really is that main contact that's going to coordinate services. So if you have any questions, call the county board, call the intermediate care facility and ask questions about when you should expect this. People are at different stages of the process, but it is on the horizon. Like I said, that 2024 uh, deadline, June 30th, 2024, for those people residing in ICFs or uh, receiving waiver services is only a year away. And we know that, you know, got to start planning as soon as possible for people. So really, if you have any questions, there's also DODD's website. The webpage has a wealth of resources and information. The, there's an email address. People monitor that a couple times a day and we get responses. We develop frequently asked questions. So I would direct people to our awesome. website. There's also a regional map. Like I mentioned, my team, there are two regional coordination managers that split the state. And then each region of the state has a regional support facilitator or RSF that really is kind of the face of the Ohio ISP. They are ready to roll up their sleeves, kind of get in there with the um, SSAs and QIDPs across the state to say, 
where are you with this, with this implementation to Ohio ISP? No matter where you're at in the journey, we're, we're there to help you. If you're struggling with um, getting roles and access with IT, we can help you with that. If you're having person-centered planning practices, conversations, we can help you with that. If you're struggling with certain questions, we want your feedback. We have feedback surveys that are will be available to team members. So we want to use those to analyze data, see patterns and trends, see where we need to focus our efforts on future trainings and um, support to people. Awesome. So I've been very excited about, um, I like Toyota trucks and I've been very excited. I've always liked them, but I've been very excited about 2024 because the new Toyota Tacoma comes out. And I almost feel like that's kind of what this is. Like yes. the, the, the Toyota truck was doing fine. It was it was achieving what it was supposed to do. People liked it. It's a bestseller. But Toyota said, hey, like, look, let's improve this. They put in all kinds of R&D work and they're launching it. And that sounds to me like what this Ohio ISP is. Yes, it's very similar. Um, I think we are super excited because we can't wait. We It's been, you know, a long time coming. Like you said, you know, we had a global pandemic in the middle. So, you know, we are thrilled to get to the implementation phase to really hear from people like what is working, what's not working. You said sometimes I do hear about the bugs and things that have been challenges, but we also want to help people overcome those challenges. And we need to know what what could be enhanced and what can be improved upon. So we welcome that. We have uh, lots of different ways for people to provide feedback. And we really look forward to within the next year, really getting to a better place with, we've got plans in the system. What we're hearing from plan authors across the state is that plan's good, but wait till next year. Now we have the tools and the skill sets. We can't wait to do the next round of plans. We feel like we know better. We're going to do better. Um, So that has been great. And hearing from people who might not have been super enthusiastic about the, the change in the beginning. We've heard from many plan authors that they have might have known people that they've worked with for years. They might have known them for 20 years. And through the assessment questions, through the discovery process and that ongoing conversation, they've learned new things, that they've asked questions in a different way. And they've um, probed a little deeper and really learn some things that have helped people get more of what they want out of life. No, so I think just, those are just very inspiring awesome. quotes. Yeah. Really great. This was great, Beth. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Logan. Please like, share, and subscribe to the RRPG channel so you can stay up to date with some of the latest news in the disability community.